So what I'd like to do is just ask you who you are, okay. and then ask you who Landing AI is, okay. and then talk about application. What we want to do is talk about application. Our audience is going to be operator, supervisor, engineer, yeah. digital transformation professional. Got it. Okay. And then what I'd like for you to do is to talk about how this applies to them, and then I will, I will um, comment on how it drives value for the business. All right, so we're here with David with Landing AI. Yeah. All right, so David, quick, what is Landing AI? Yeah, okay. so uh, just a quick introduction. My name is David. Uh, I lead our data science practice okay. uh, for our go-to-market team at Landing AI. Um, and, uh, to introduce our company, we make computer vision easy. Um, so I, I think difficult concepts in AI can feel somewhat esoteric at times. Yes. Uh, and we want to kind of lower that barrier to entry. Are you a data scientist? I am. All right, so yeah. let's... Let's do the, the normal, everybody asks me, Walker, how do, you, how do I tell if somebody's full of shit or not, all right? <laughs> all right, so here, here it is, a data scientist here. In your own words, explain for the audience what is the difference between machine learning yep. and artificial intelligence? Well, machine learning is a, a subset of artificial intelligence. Okay. Um, without going into it too much, um, I guess within artificial intelligence and machine learning, there's also deep learning, which is where we specialize in. Okay. And we do, uh, specific, more specifically, we do computer vision, right? Okay. So deriving value and nuanced insights from images, videos, uh, any kind of visual uh, uh, assets that you right. have. So David passed the test, okay. all right? The, the answer we're generally looking for is basically what you gave. Sure. I'm glad that you moved into the deep learning component. It's not what, but in general, what we say is machine learning is computers learning from data, yep. and artificial intelligence is computer mimicking human intelligence. Sure. David passed the test, so we could trust what he tells us. All right. Yeah. So, how does landing AI? Yep. How does landing AI work for the worker? So, what what is it? Yeah. And how does it work for the worker? Yeah. Kind of going back to I guess uh, my previous point on you know data science being uh, a very uh, a daunting topic for most people. Okay. So instead of you know, um, data scientists working separately from the subject matter expertise in manufacturing lines and, and manufacturing plants, we bring the data science to the subject matter experts, right? Okay. So we provide a an end-to-end, no-code platform for operators, quality managers, uh, VP of IP. And does that manifest in like a Tulip app or is it you have your own platform but you also have a Tulip app? Great question. So okay. we are a separate platform. Okay. However, we have a full integration capability. Um, we have custom widgets depending on what kind of projects that you want to build within our platform. Okay. Uh, so this is actually a, a demo that, that we built together with Tulip. Um, and how long did it take you to build the demo? Everybody uh, wants to know. Yeah. So to train a model, probably a day or two. Okay. Uh, in, in terms of custom widget, uh, probably another day or two, but we, we made it a little bit prettier, so uh, okay. maybe a week or two. But less than a week. Less, less than a week. week yeah. So what are we looking at? Yeah, so we're looking at a uh, classification project here. Uh, we have these uh, 3D printed molded injection parts with okay. uh, various defects. Uh, so for this model, we only have three defects, so three classes for the model. So we're trying to identify defects in a print. Exactly. Got it. So okay. we took a bunch of pictures of these parts, uh, trained the model using our platform, Lending Lens, and then uh, productionized the model as an API endpoint, and we're interact, uh, interacting with Tulip uh, widget as a custom widget. And so how does this apply to the operator? In the Industry 3 language, what I have is a printed out piece of paper that shows me non-conforming examples. I look at for non-conformance with my own eyes, and whether or not I identify non-conformity is a function of my individual ability to pick it up with my eyeballs. And what we're using is landing AI here yeah. to take that step out. What yeah. we're doing is now we're using artificial intelligence to identify non-conformities that we've predefined, yeah. we've classified. Exactly. Okay. So, so the operators can train a model using our platform. Okay. But we kind of want to, you know, make sure that as an operator, you know, you only care about your job, right? So, we create a, a consumable. Uh, application that they can use uh, to help their uh, do their jobs a lot better. Is non-conformance is that is so is is looking for defect and non-conformity your primary go-to-market at this point, or is it or are there other vision applications? Let me give you an example. Sure. We recently used Vision. I, I own an integration firm as well, but I I don't run that company anymore. But I still own it. Okay. It operates under our strategy, my strategies. 
We recently developed a vision system using artificial uh, machine learning, actually. To it was basically for a bakery that had 12 raw dough balls in yep. the tray, yep. and we're using vision to identify how many of the balls are there. Is yep. it 10? Is it 11? Is it 12? Yep. We started there, and then we moved to nonconformance. One of the nonconformance checks was, excuse me, if the viscosity of the dough was too low, yeah. it would flatten in the tray. Yeah. It was it was meant to hold its form. Yeah. Is landing AI an appropriate tool for an application like that? It absolutely is. Okay. I think that's actually where deep learning shines. Um, whereas, uh, if you compare it to kind of like machine vision and traditional rule-based system, where you have to teach the system exactly what you're looking for, yes. whereas artificial intelligence can you know pick up those nuances. Right, so. it sees the gray space. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to give an example, we work with like a waste treatment plant company where they look at different types of, uh, probably not the most uh, appetizing word, but like sludge, yeah. to understand like how much polymer they need to add to treat that uh, particular sludge or that batch. So similar example, but different industry. So for those of you who saw our podcast that dropped yesterday, where we brought our engineers on to explain that AI, that ML AI application, also our full strength.ai vision system, this is a tool, an off the shelf tool that could that could handle the exact same use case without all the custom coding we did. We didn't have to, you don't have to deploy your own Conda environment, you don't have to train the model yourself. What we have is a platform that is allowing us to do that, yep, right? Exactly. All right, one last thing. Sure. Where is this weak? So everybody always wants me to hear, wants me to ask the question. Yeah. Give me an application where people try to use vision to train a model where yeah. this would not be appropriate. Yeah, I, I, I think. Um, where it is weak is where people try to apply AI where it probably shouldn't right. be applied, right? So like color matching, right? Uh, areas where a simple rules-based system can do just as good job or maybe even better. Right. Why, um, why, why bring a Ferrari? Why, why bring a Ferrari to something where a, a, a clipboard will do? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let me ask you this, all in. So this example, uh, they want to ask here, Pratt. So all in here, we've got, let's say we've got one man week of work. Uh -huh. So one man week of engineering. And what's the cost here all in if I, for the landing AI element of this? Uh, in terms of cost? Yes. Yeah, so the commercial model is consumption based. So number of inspections uh, is, is fully cloud-based. Fully cloud-based. However, our models can be downloaded on edge devices. So for high throughput use cases, uh, we can support up to 20, 30 plus per second. So, you know, Coca-Cola bottles moving through the manufacturing line, I'm sure. So is, yeah. is, my, is my cost gonna be a function of how many, how many I inspect in a month? Yes, okay. Yeah. Plus, how much training I've done in a month? How many models I've trained? So uh, training and inferencing are the same. So it's one credit per image. So Whether give me give me a ballpark. Let's say we're moving, let's say we're moving thirty thousand units a month, okay? And we've trained, we've classified three nonconformities, just ballpark. Uh, one thousand, ten thousand, or a hundred thousand. Uh, yeah. Ten thousand. Yeah. In in the ten thousand range per month. Yep. Got it. Yep. All right. 10,000 per year. Yeah. Got it. So we would be looking at seven between 7 and 800 dollars a month. Okay? 7 and 800 dollars a month for 10,000 units throughput and three classifications. Yep. All right. First off, that's fucking crazy. Those numbers are crazy. Uh, that's that's yeah. Well, I mean, the truth is if it's a human being doing this, you know, I mean, what's their What's their actual cycle time? I mean, they're going to do three per minute. So yeah. Right? So kind of going yeah. back to the counting example, right? We were working with an yeah. automotive company. Uh, they were looking at X-ray images of doors. Their cycle time to count like all the screws and making sure everything was correct was around 30 seconds. But, but, and, but let's use an eight-second example. Yeah. Eight seconds are really common cycle time, right? Okay. So if we use eight seconds, that's going to be um, eight eight per minute. Um, so that's thirty-five thousand. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something like thirty-five thousand. So now you're looking at triple the cost, basically. So at ten thousand units with three classifications, nonlinear. Okay, I got it. And this is to cover your elastic costs yeah. in the cloud. Got it. Okay. Awesome.
baked in that play. You're all good. Whereas if you do this on your own, right. there's a lot of investments that you need. So the, what's your name again? So what Eric's saying over there is that very important point. There's no infrastructure cost for them to maintain. Whereas if you try to do this, create the infrastructure yourself, your to total cost of ownership is the cost of infrastructure plus the cost of all implementation and maintenance. Yeah. And most people don't take into account the cost of the infrastructure. All right, so in summary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So in, in a nutshell, I mean, what this basically boils down to is, in layman's terms, we're taking data that you already have. With Landing AI, there's, by the way, non-affiliated, non-sponsored. I just met these guys. <laughs> so uh, you're, they're taking data you already have, and they're turning that into value to create more data that turns into value for the business. And at the end of the day, if you're the executive going, why do I need this when I've already, when we're already visually inspecting with my own eyes, the answer is, is that human beings, maximum fidelity, human, human inspection, human data collection. The best people in the world at manual data collection are the Japanese, and they have 60% fidelity. That means if they get six out of 10 entries right, that's world class. I am assuming that your accuracy on the model here is 95 plus, so yeah. north of 95%. Yeah. So where's the delta? The delta is gonna come in throughput, and that's 60 to 95 number. All right, David, awesome. Yeah, Appreciate you, brother. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. All right, check them out, guys.